You'll see him over here. Christmas in April. Ooh, a savage barbell. That can only mean one thing. Booty first, shorts. First pair. Of booty shorts. <laughs> <laughs> it's not for you, Sadie. You don't wear shorts. Shout out. GBX. Ooh. Let's see what we got. Lemon. Lemon drops. Lemon drops. Ooh. You seem pretty. Nope. No, say nope. those aren't for you. <laughs> Make sure she doesn't get that. Let's see them. Oh, there we go. Very nice. <laughs> Savage. Savage. Let me see them. Lemon drops. Squat fruit. Squat fruit. <laughs> Sunday morning brunch. Gotta have your bacon, hash browns, OJ, coffee's going. What do we have over here on this station? Got the eggs. Eggs. <laughs> eggs and then waffle makers getting hot. And we're gonna eat very good. It's our own version of Waffle House. A waffle House, <laughs> in, an in-house Waffle House. Our big brunch Sunday. And sometimes, not today, sometimes that's in the mix. Not today. What are we doing today? We are going golfing. Golfing. Have you golfed? Not in a long time. <laughs> <laughs> Sadie, do you golf? Do you golf? No? Where's your ball? Go get your ball. Go find your ball. Oh. So close. By the sand trap. Bye. <laughs> nice.
Nice. Five, and you got a six. Yes, six seems to be my lucky number. Looks like I'm up by four. No. One, two, three, four. Oh, and I'm up by five. I don't with, lose. With uh, three holes to go. All right. Cheers to that. Clink. No, you didn't cheers to that. Clink. <laughs> Lady driver, watch out. Just kidding. <laughs> I got this. Oh, funnel. I did not do that on purpose. It's the cart pad, not me. Last hole. I think I'm up by five again. So as long as I don't poop the bed, I'll uh, I walk away with a win. I could get a hole in one right here. You, you could. Know? All right, let's see it. We're gonna get the uh huh. Totally good times. Hey guys, welcome to the show today. We are still talking about our TBF class and how we program it. So last week I briefly mentioned, you know, that we follow um, certain phases throughout the year, and that's kind of what I wanted to talk about today. So. We're right now kind of in a hybrid strength hypertrophy phase. I, I, I titled it functional hypertrophy. It's not my uh, term. I didn't come up with that, but it's what we're using. And it's basically a way to make the muscle fiber size thicker um, in cross-sectional diameter. And we do that by hitting the muscle from different angles, uh, same movement pattern, but from slightly different angles, like a incline bench, flat bench, and then hitting the back for, with, a, with a bent over row. Um, that's for our upper body, obviously. So we are, that's the phase we're in right now. But what I didn't mention and what I wanted to take this week and kind of break down how we put together programs throughout the year, um, I want to talk about, uh, why we do it that way. So today I'll talk about why we do it. And then in subsequent videos this week, I will talk about each phase and what's really unique to that phase and how we, um, uh, put our own little spin on it. So most athletes, when they train, they're going to have um, you know some training work done in season. They're going to have some uh, post-season work, off-season work, and pre-season work. Now, very traditionally, there's lots of different ways to do this, uh, but generally speaking, the in-season work is thought of of a maintenance-style program. Now, this is where I think a lot of people go wrong, and this is where people a lot of people lose some strength and lose some. Um, momentum that they've built up throughout the year. And so tomorrow we're going to talk about this in-season training or not, um, and how we <clears throat> make sure that the athlete really keeps those gains that they've made throughout the year. The postseason is generally thought of as kind of a rest and recovery. So we still want them to move. We're not trying to push heavy weight. We're not trying to make any real progress in the gym. We're just trying to keep the athlete uh, moving and working after the season is over. 
Then the off season hits. The off season is the meat and potatoes of what we're trying to accomplish. Now every sport has different length off seasons. Um, some sports are, um, you know, have a fall and a spring season, like, you know, um, and so you, you can have two different off seasons. So it can be split up a lot of different ways. This is just kind of a very basic traditional model. Uh, and then you have your preseason, and then your preseason is where you're really focused on getting sport specific and skill specific movements uh, within your strength and conditioning. Not just your practicing of the sport, but in the strength and conditioning. So we're doing more um, specific style drills. So, for example, in the off season, I might have everyone, say on a football team, do a incline or a regular flat uh, barbell bench press, just for some general upper body strength and muscle development. But as we get into preseason uh, mode, I still might want to push a little heavy, but I might have, say, the um, the linemen go with a jammer machine. So, you know, mimic a little bit more sport-specific move that they're going to be doing in their sport. So that's just one example. Um, so in our TBF class, we do the same kind of thing. Although we're not training for a specific sport and we don't have a, an in-season, post-season, off-season phase, we still will break up our training, our macro cycle. Um, that's our, our year, kind of year in, uh, in the view uh, down the road where we want to be. We break that up into several different phases. A strength phase, hypertrophy phase, muscle building, um, uh, a power phase, and a muscular endurance phase. And the reason we have these different phases and we cycle through each one is so that we can continue to gain progress throughout the year without overtraining or overworking one particular area. Um, also, it would be worth noting that although you can train different modalities concurrently, like say endurance and strength, um, if I wanted to get stronger and increase my 5K time, I could do that, but I would get better gains over the course of a year. So we're looking long-term here, right? That's that's the whole philosophy at, at Upstate Performance Project. Lifestyle changes, long-term lifestyle changes. So over that time, it, I will get better at that in quicker results if I stagger my phases. So if I'm working on muscular strength for a little bit, then I do a little bit more maintenance style there while I'm increasing my muscular endurance or my cardiovascular endurance, if that's a goal. So at the end of the year, I've gotten better at both. If I had done them concurrently, I may not. I may have gotten better at both, but my end result may not be as good as if I had staggered it a little bit like that. Just so you can focus uh, and really make the most out of your time when you're focusing on one or two um, like similar uh, goals, rather than try to, you know, do everything all at once. Uh, so we do that here. So right now, that um, that. Uh, functional hypertrophy that we're in is definitely not a basic strength phase and it's not a basic hypertrophy phase. This would fall more in line with hypertrophy, but because of the time under tension, we are also going to get a lot of strength gains as well. Because the muscular fibers are getting bigger, um, we are going to be able to do more. We're going to have more strength. But what we're, the way we would follow this up is after this kind of strength hypertrophy phase, we're going to go into a pure strength phase. So hopefully we've gotten a little bit bigger, a little bit more functional muscle mass, and then we're going to really hit it hard and get strong over the next four or five weeks after that. Then we're going to go into a power phase. So we've gotten a little bit bigger. We've gotten a little bit stronger. Now what we're going to do is make that, that strong muscle that we've built as powerful, explosive, and functional as possible. Um, and then we can back off and do more of a muscular endurance. Still want to maintain that, that those strength gains, but work more on endurance. That would be akin to say like an in-season for a, an athlete where we want to maintain all the strength and the size, but we want to work on some other things right now, like in a, in a sport, the sport specific skills or the sport practices. So the strength training sessions can't take too much away from that. So that's where it kind of mimics uh, a, a, an athlete um, or an athletic sport um, style of training. And that's what we like to do here at the Upstate Performance Project because we feel that that's what gives you guys the best results. So what we're gonna do over the course uh, of the next couple videos is go through each one of those phases. So in the next video, we're gonna talk more about the in-season training because I think that's not the necessarily the most misunderstood, but what most people think of just a maintenance phase and how they go around about programming that is, um, 
probably not getting the best bang for their buck. And so we're going to talk about some different ways you can do that. So join us on the next uh, episode. Enjoy the footage from this week. Uh, we, we've, we've done a lot over the last week, so we've got some good footage for you guys to enjoy. Have fun. All right. This is Open the governor. Open it. Open it. Open it. All right, I'll get you. Come yes. In. I'm coming to get you. Coming. We don't want. He doesn't want to haunt him. So you got to open up the theater, okay, Governor? We got to open the theater, and that way Frankenfurter can't haunt me. can't haunt you. That's right. Use it and open the downtown right now. Hurry. Open it. <laughs>